slide, please. So it is my pleasure to introduce you now, Antonio Lopez, uh, principal investigator of autonomous driving at Computer Vision Center, uh, the, the UAB. So, and also ICREA academia professor at the Department of Computer Science, Universidad Autónoma de Barcelona. Antonio has a long trajectory current research at the intersection of computer vision simulation, machine learning, driver assistance, and autonomous driving. Antonio has been deeply involved in the creation of Cynthia dataset and the Carla open source simulator, a very successful simulator that we will have the pleasure to know more about now. But for democratizing autonomous driving research, he's actively working hand-on-hand in -hand with industry partners to bring the state-of-the-art techniques to the field of autonomous driving. So now we're going to land from the presentation that Josep Maria made before to a clear example of uh, Carla's digital twin. So Antonio, the floor is yours. You are physically here, so please. Good evening. I will wait a bit for the presentation to come. Okay. Okay, first of all, uh, thank you very much to the organizers for inviting me to uh, explain in a, in, in, in a short time, but still explaining a bit what we are doing uh, today. And before coming here, I was not so sure if what I'm going to explain could be called digital twin, because I don't know what is this formally, but I think from the previous talk that yeah, we can we can call it like like this. Actually, what I'm going to explain is a specific experience we are uh, working on today. Not finished it, but uh, ongoing. But uh, okay, it seems. Um, I, th I think, guys, that in, in that way will not work because uh, the videos we are not moving in that way. We should we should use this. No, let, let me try it. Now, now it's working. Okay, thank you very much. Uh, first of all, let, let, let me remind uh, to everybody that doesn't know about Carla Simulator that our mission is to foster and democratizing research, development and validation in autonomous driving systems, in the development of autonomous driving system. And this is very important because uh, otherwise there is many people in the industry, in the academia that don't have a way of testing the ideas beyond some static Worlds, okay, and, and we are able to do that thanks to our sponsors like Intel, Toyota, Futureway, General Motors, along these years. So the experience is that we we are we have been asked by the Generalitat of Catalonia about um, understanding the difficulties of deploying an autonomous vehicle to act as a tram in uh, unpopulated, unpopulated areas, like uh, here in, in, in Alos de Sil, which is in the mountains in the Pyrenees, close to Andorra. And the point is that this is not the common uh, scenario that we find in, in, the, in the papers related to autonomous driving, in the news, and, and so on and so forth. Because, you know, there are not too many people there. So who cares? Okay, but the governments have to care. And this is why the Generalita is, is helping us with this project, because it's not only about big cities like here in Barcelona, but, but it's also about other places in Catalonia and around the world. So um, in this case, we want to see what are the problems of deploying an autonomous car in, in a road like this, which is a four kilometer road, which is a narrow road, uh, is not too much populated with traffic, people or other cars. Not this, this is not a problem, but you know, it's surrounded by uh, vegetation that is changing uh, according to the season. Is also because we are focusing a lot in computer vision. Is also uh, um, showing very high contrast 
uh, depending on the on the place of the rock where you are, etc. There are a, a bunch of problems that we we have to understand if if they can be easily solved in a manner that the final solution is something not too expensive. So the first thing we did is because of course this is like four hours driving from here. Uh, we cannot go there all the time annoying the people to do the, the development and all this. What we did was to uh, create a clone of this area in Carla Simulator or the Carla Simulator. So what you see here are not any more real images, are the images that are coming from the simulator. And the good thing is that here we can choose whatever car model, we can change the weather conditions, we can change the sensor intrinsic, sensor intrinsic, the session features, time slot, all kinds of things can be changed and defining a specific traffic uh, events to test and train. So in here in this video, what uh, we see is an autopilot driving. This means that this autopilot has access to all the privileged information of the simulator. So it can eventually drive perfectly and do whatever we, we ask for. So in, the, in this other video, it's not anymore an autopilot what is driving, but it's an AI. So an AI means that we uh, train it a vision-based uh, agent that is able to analyze the images and produce the commands to the vehicle to move it uh, safely in this area. The point here is that, sorry, the point here is that, of course, to, to reach this last solution, uh, we did many, many tests. We applied our, our experience. We tested uh, state-of-the-art uh, technologies or proposals. We did many tests. Most of them at the beginning were having issues, of course, but it's not a problem because we are in the simulator. So we can have these issues. It's where we can analyze in deep all kinds of issues. So uh, just to, to mention how we did that, uh, the part that is more related to wor this workshop, I mean, the, the, the creation of the map. Basically, we took uh, uh, publicly available uh, GIS information, like orthophotos and digital elevation maps, and we uh, cook it, everything, in a way that the Carla simulator can understand it. So from this information, which is a sort of geometry without textures, and also a bunch of uh, assets that we have, so a library of assets with material, textures, 3D objects, we put all together, and then we were able to uh, come up with this uh, more realistic uh, scenario. But this is not enough. Sometimes uh, what happens in, in the real, uh, in the simulation, cannot be directly deployed in the real world. What you can do is to reproduce the solution that you found to be the best in the simulation, but not directly deploying, for instance, models that you have trained in the simulation, because you have this kind of scene to real domain gap thing, which is a big problem nowadays. But what we did is that, okay, with this information that we basically uh, generated in simulation for real time testing, training and all this, we can also cook it a bit differently in a way that can be ready for physics-based photorealistic rendering, which is not real time anymore, it's, it's taking minutes per image. But in this case, the goal is that images that, as those that you see in the screen now, which are uh, uh, renders, um, are more are closer to the real life. And so we can avoid this kind of process that is about collecting images and uh, manual labeling these images to train deep models, for instance. So you can see here, uh, we have the same scenario with different illuminations in the, in the bottom. Uh, we can see that the person uh, has a more clear shadow than in the, in the top, but in the two cases, the annotations that are used by the neural networks that want to detect pedestrians or vehicles 
or road, whatever is what you see in the in the in the right. So you have semantic classes and you have dev, and we don't need to generate this by hand, and we do it by uh, automatically uh, close to the to the process of uh, generating the rendered images. So beyond that experience, we also work for the community in what we call the leaderboard uh, of Carla. In this case, we have a bunch of scenarios. Uh, we are also generating uh, maps, very large maps, like 100 kilometers square by uh, consuming this data. And in this case, the goal is that we have a common place worldwide where everyone can test their own algorithms and see, okay, my algorithm is working better than this other algorithm uh, when performing autonomous driving. So we can, uh, let's say, uh, compare in a, in a standard way uh, this, all these autonomous driving stacks. And I hope I did it in 10 minutes, Fernando. <laughs> Thank you very much. Thank, thank you very much, Antonio. Uh, just one one comment because now we, we are having a specific example of uh, the digital twin, and you you showed us a road that really exists and how to how to modulate it. Um, again, um, in the specific case of of the autonomous car, um, what is the thing that you are missing? I will I will ask you a little bit of a question like I did with with um, with Joseph Maria. If you would have access to all the data that is possible, what is the kind of data that you are missing now that you would need in order to accelerate the development of the simulations that you are having? Well, uh, uh, it's difficult to answer because I have here two roles. One role is that I'm working in the development of the AI. The other role is that because I don't have a car, a physical car uh, until now, we were also working in the development of simulator. If you ask me from the point of view of the AI, I would say I need a simulator. But I, uh, I think that you are asking from the point of view of the simulator. So basically is to, to have, uh, let's say, a standards for this all this uh, uh, data exchange between different programs so that we can consume in a kind of super standard way uh, any this data, let's say, in a easy way. Also, um, we used to populate uh, the cities with assets that are from us because otherwise we cannot redistribute it. If we buy assets and, and, and use them, we cannot later redistribute it. And we want to share everything with the community. So this asset generation, like buildings, pedestrians, realistic moving pedestrians, all these kind of things, are still uh, under a very manual uh, process and should be at some point generalized and scaled to, to make uh, all the possibilities. Thank you.